And would you please stand? This is a great moment, isn't it? I mean, we've worked, we, some of us haven't done a thing. They have worked really hard to get to this point. And I know that all of you would feel the same as I feel. It's really an honor to be here. This is a great young man and young woman who have, who have lived their lives with, with clarity and with direction. And we're so appreciative of that in this day and age to see this kind of an example. And aren't you glad to be associated with these two families? They're great families. Well, it is an important day. It's a serious day. You're going to know how serious. If you're bored at weddings, count how many times I use their middle name. That lets you know it's a serious day. And let's commit it to the Lord as we begin. Father, we're so thankful. As we've said, this is a great moment to share with this couple. Lord, we're asking that you'll bless, of course, in this service, that it might be an encouragement to this couple to Adriana and to Andrew, but also that it would be an encouragement to every person here. Lord, that we would hide, hold rather our marriage in high esteem. Father, again, we ask for your blessing, not only on the day, but most importantly on their lives. And we ask for it, praying in the name of our Savior, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Well, if you'll have a seat, please. We are gathered today to celebrate one of the happiest moments in the lives of Andrew Jeffrey Degg and Adriana Nicole Degg. For on this day, Andrew and Adriana affirm before witnesses of earth and heaven that they believe God has purpose that they should share life and holy bonds of marriage. Would you like to go get your bride? You were waiting for that? All right. In Matthew chapter 19, verses 4 to 6, Jesus said, haven't you read the scriptures? They record that from the beginning, God made them male and female. He said this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one separate them, for God has joined them together. This is really an important moment, not just for this couple, but also for the families. It means we see our children differently when we are there on their wedding day and to the parents of Adriana. From now on, she's more than just your daughter. She is your son-in-law's wife. That's what the Bible means by cleaving, separating, and, and joining together. To the parents of Andrew, well, it's the same. He's more than just your son because now he becomes your daughter-in-law's husband. God clearly declares marriage to be a covenant relationship, a relationship based 
on vows established before God and witnesses. It's a relationship based not on emotion, but on commitment. Andrew, is it your commitment to see Adriana to your side, to love her and care for her, to open your heart and life to her? It is. Who gives this woman to this man? Bible tells us that God saw that it was not good for a man to be alone. So with loving care, he removed a bone from Adam's side with, from which to fashion Eve. And God brought Eve to Adam. Thus the scripture suggests that God specifically made Eve for Adam and Adam for Eve. Ad Andrew and Adriana, you have both affirmed before God that he has specifically purposed you to share life together. Andrew, it is important for a husband to learn something about receiving his wife by observing the manner in which God created Eve. God did not use a bone from Adam's foot to suggest he should lord it over the wife, nor did he take a bone from his head to suggest that Eve should lord it over the husband. In choosing to use Adam's rib, it is suggested that Eve was created to share a life at Adam's side, close to his heart. Love is patient, 1 Corinthians tells us, and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. Love is described in the scripture not as an emotion, but as a commitment and as responsible behavior. How do we express this love to each other when we are so different and they have no clue how different they are? Well, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, it says this. We find the key to understanding how married love is to be expressed in practical ways. Listen to these words of the Bible. So again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Simply put, this is what I share with you. Adriana, contrary to much of what is taught in today's world, you must adjust your life to Andrew's leadership. You must love him by respecting him. Andrew, in this marriage, you must be committed to meeting Adriana's needs. You must love her by serving her. God's pattern is clear. One man for one woman till death do them part. Believing that this couple understands that kind of lifetime love and commitment, I'm going to ask you, Andrew Jeffrey Smith, I'm asking you before God and these witnesses, do you accept Adrienne and Nicole Dagg as your equal? Do you find in her the qualities that you respect and admire? Do you commit to live with Adriana for a lifetime? Do you intend to give freely to her and receive freely from her? Will you take Adriana to be your wife? And will you promise to be true to her forsaking all others? I do. Adriana Nicole Degg, I'm asking before God and these witnesses, do you accept Andrew as your equal? Do you find in him the qualities that you respect and admire? Do you commit to live with Andrew for a lifetime? Do you intend to give freely to him and receive freely from him? Will you take Andrew to be your husband and will you promise to be true to him forsaking all others? I do. Now we come to the most important part of the afternoon. Andrew, would you please share your wedding vows with Adriana? <clears throat> I, Andrew, take you, Adriana, to be my lawfully wedded wife, to love you not only when things are at their best, but also at their worst, to hold your hand when you're cheerful, and to hold you tight when you cry, 
I vow to treat you with respect as my lifelong partner and consider you in all that I do. For we are equal in God's eyes, and so it will be in this marriage. We will have our ups and our downs, but we will never let human or cow get between us. <laughs> <laughs> I love you more than I did yesterday, and I will love you more tomorrow than I did today for the rest of my life. And Adriana, please read your wedding vows to Andrew. Andrew Jeffrey, it's crazy to think that six and a half years ago, I sat a hundred yards away in the church parking lot and said, I guess, to being your girlfriend. And now, here I stand today, being ready to say, I do, to being your wife. These past several years have held many milestones and events in our lives, and through each one, we stood side by side to not only celebrate the wins, but to also grieve and move past the losses. You have watched more pageants in these six years than I'm sure you had planned to your whole life, and I now have almost every Glee Club song and dance memorized. Although these are parts of each other's lives that may not have always been fun for the other, we have continuously shown up to support the things that mean the most. I promise to continue to be that support system beside you and be your biggest cheerleader through this game of life. I promise to care for you when you are under the weather and to also keep you energized and excited to conquer each new day. I promise that when it's time to make the grocery list, ice cream will always be at the top. <laughs> and when we go to shopping together and I find random things in the cart, I promise to only say, that's not in the budget, a few times. Today, I vow to you my whole heart for my whole life. I vow to love you in ways only a wife can love you and cherish you as the man and husband you deserve to be cherished as. I vow to be your solid rock when you feel the ground crumbling under your feet and be the wind in your wings when your dreams are ready to take flight. I vow to wake up every day thankful to have you as my husband and count the many blessings that are in our life. I vow to keep God in the center of the relationship and to lean on him through the joys and the sorrows this life will bring us. I vow to you that today, from this day forward, I will be your best friend, your lover, encourager, buddy seat rider, and finally, your wife. So the day the good Lord calls us home. I love you. Very nice. To portray the exchanging of your wedding vows, and as a public witness of them, you will now exchange rings. So we'll see if the best man still has it. <laughs> Andrew, please repeat after me and to Adriana as you place the ring on her finger. Adriana. Adriana. I give you this ring, I give you this ring as, a symbol as a symbol of my commitment, of my commitment to, always love you. to always love you. With this ring, With this ring I thee wed. I thee wed. <laughs> and if you'll get your ring from and Adriana, please repeat after me to Andrew as you place the ring on his finger. Andrew, I give you this ring. Andrew, I give you this ring. As a symbol. As a symbol. Of my commitment. Of my commitment. To always love you. To always love you. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. Now I'm going to ask the couple to turn and face you because you have been invited. Go ahead and just turn and look at the witnesses. You have been invited to be here, not only to celebrate in the moment. To but, but to be a witness in this very important moment. The word covenant is much more, that's a dramatic pause, <laughs> all right? <laughs> the word covenant is much more than a contract. You remember perhaps when you were young, if something was good, it was super. Now you gotta be pretty old to remember this. If it was really good, it was super duper. Well, this is a super duper commitment. It goes beyond just a contract, beyond just the papers that are signed and given to the government to indicate that the day took place. So because of that, we change the way we think. Now I know I'm going to mention something in this next verse in Malachi chapter 2 that in some moments might be uncomfortable for a number of you because it's going to mention the word divorce. You didn't know it, but life gets complicated. Have you figured that one out? A lot of things happen that we never dreamed of happening and we never desired to happen. I've never heard a single person say, well, you know, I went through a divorce and it turned out to be a good thing, so what I want is all of my kids to go through a divorce. No one ever says that. Oh, a divorce will make you see things you didn't know. Nobody wants their kids to experience that. So I give a charge to this couple 
that they never use the D word. You know, some words are so bad, we don't say them out loud. Well, that word is just as dangerous. Never in a fight is the word to be used. Never in speculation after watching some dopey film on Hallmark. Who would you marry if I died? No, none of those things because the focus is I love God and I hide, hold rather in high esteem marriage and my spouse. So with that in mind as witnesses to this very important moment, I'm going to ask that you make a commitment to this couple. It is possible because it's happened to so many of us in our relationships they grow and they go through really difficult times. If either one of them would ever come to you and whisper that word divorce, you need to stand up and say, you know what? I was there the day that you were married. I heard the beautiful promises you made to each other. Here's my advice to you. Get through it. Because you won't be the first couple to get through a hard time. You won't be the last couple to get through a hard time. So if you would promise to remind them during some dark hour of desperation, I was there. I heard you make the promises. I expect you to keep and honor your vows. Would you put them on the spot and just raise your hand and say, I will be that kind of a witness. All right, take a look. I mean to tell you, it's over. I mean, it's just be... <laughs> That came out wrong. It's just beginning. That's what I meant to say. Here are those words found in Malachi 2.14. Really directed to you, Andrew. The Bible says, The Lord is acting as a witness between you and the wife of your youth. She is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith with the wife of your youth. I hate divorce. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on that important word. Father, again, we are so excited to be here to be a part of this day. And it is a day of celebration. And Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to not only to have been a part of this couple's life, but to know that as you give days and as you give opportunities, we'll continue to be in their corner cheering for them and, and encouraging them in every way possible. Father, we ask that you would bless them. Lord, that you would give them your strength to carry out the important promises that they've made. Lord, that you would bring the right kind of examples and the right kind of encouragement into their, to their young marriage that you would keep them strong. Lord, as we look to the future, and only you would know the answer to this question, but Father, if you bless them with children, we ask that you'll give them wisdom to bring those children up in this strong faith that they have claimed as their own. Again, Father, for all that's happening today, we are so thankful. We commit them to you. We commit them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it took us a while to get here. But it is my privilege for as much as Andrew and Adriana have promised God and one another that they will be true to God and each other, having symbolized this by the exchange of rings, I now pronounce them husband and wife, or according to the laws of this state and in the sight of God. As a public seal of this covenant and as an expression of your love for each other, Andrew, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> you did us proud. All right. It is my pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Andrew Smith.
<laughs> Please remain seated in, until the bride and the groom dismiss pews one at a time, starting with their parents in the front row. We ask that you wear your mask once you are dismissed until you are outside the church. Please take them with you to the reception as you will need to wear them through the food line. Once you have been dismissed, please take a bubble wand and wait for the couple to come out and do a formal exit from the main entrance. We hope you can join us at the reception immediately following. Once most guests have arrived and lunch is ready, the DJ will begin releasing tables to begin eating before the couple and wedding party arrive. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs>